this uh, latest announcement regarding our work to rid the Harris County Jail of dangerous contraband. I'm Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez. I'm joined also by Assistant Chief Philip Bosquez, who oversees our detention command, as well as Assistant District Attorney Kimberly Smith, our partner in this investigation with District Attorney Kim Ogg's Public Corruption Division. Last week, we invited all of you here to announce that we arrested a local attorney charged with delivering dangerous narcotics to the jail. I told you then that this was just the first shoe to drop in our aggressive campaign to make the jail safer for those who live and work there. Back in October, our Sheriff's Office Proactive Internal Affairs team uncovered evidence that one of our own detention officers was potentially selling drugs to people in the jail. Our team then confirmed that the detention officer delivered K2 synthetic marijuana and marijuana to people in the jail. We also believe he possibly delivered other illegal narcotics, which we hope to confirm very soon. So this still remains an active investigation. Our deputies worked closely with the district attorney's office to build a case that culminated in yesterday's grand jury indictment of detention officer Robert Robertson, age 24. Our deputies took Robertson into custody this morning when he reported for duty at our jail facility located at 701 San Jacinto. He has since been booked into jail on a felony charge of engaging in organized criminal activity to introduce narcotics into a jail facility. We relived him a duty and will now move forward with the termination process. He has been with our agency six years. I want to thank District Attorney Kim Ogg and her team for their valuable assistance in our investigation and we will continue collaborating to ensure that anyone who has betrayed their oath to serve because of greed. No one, especially our own teammates, will be given leniency when it comes to actions that endanger the lives of those in our jail. There has been a statewide and national surge in overdoses among incarcerated people and we have not been immune from that trend. But we are committed to reversing it immediately. These arrests should serve as a strong warning to those who conspire to sell drugs in our jail. We will catch you and you will face tough consequences. It stops now or you should prepare to meet your customers in person soon wearing a matching orange jumpsuit. Now briefly I'd like to share my remarks in, in Spanish and then I'll be turning it over to uh, our partner, uh, <coughs> Assistant District Attorney Kimberly Smith. Buenas tardes y gracias por acompañarnos. Hoy les queremos informar los últimos detalles nuestro, sobre nuestro esfuerzo para eliminar contrabando peligroso en la cárcel del Condado Harris. Yo soy el alguacil del Condado Harris, Ed González, y estará acompañado, acompañado por personas de la Fiscalía y también uh, de nuestra agencia. La semana pasada les informamos sobre la detención de un abogado acusado de entregar narcóticos peligrosos en nuestra cárcel. Les dije entonces que el abogado era solo el primero en lo que esperamos que iban a ser otras personas uh, que serían tal vez uh, encontrados uh, responsables por, por situaciones similares. En octubre, uh, nuestro equipo comenzó una eh, investigación y descubrió pruebas de que uno de nuestros propios oficiales de detención estaba tal vez vendiendo drogas en, en, eh, en la, para la gente en la cárcel. Trabajaron en conjunto con la oficina de la, de la fiscal para construir un caso que culminó ayer so la, so, con la acusación del gran jurado contra el oficial Robert Robertson. Nuestros oficiales arrestaron a Robertson esta mañana cuando se, él se presentó a su trabajo aquí en nuestra cárcel. Desde entonces ha sido encarcelado por un delito grave de participar en actividades uh, uh, de, de, uh, delictivas organizadas para introducir narcóticos en un centro peni de penitencia. Quisiera dar las gracias a la fiscal Kim Ogg y a su equipo por su valiosa ayuda en nuestra investigación y seguiremos colaborando con la Fiscalía para aseguraros de que nadie traiga su juramento de ser, uh, que, no, que nadie traicione su juramento de servir con, con um, profesionalismo. Nadie, especial, especialmente nuestro propio equipo, tendrá la tolerancia cuando se trata de acciones que ponen en peligro a personas que están de esta, dentro de nuestra cárcel. Um, el, 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 la sobredosis es un problema 
muy urgente, no solamente aquí en nuestro propio condado, pero a nivel nacional también, y vamos a hacer todo lo necesario para ponerle alto a eso. Entonces, a cualquier persona que esté involucrado en este tipo de actividad, le dimos que pongan alto, si no se van a encontrar preso en nuestra propia cárcel, la cárcel donde ellos trabajaron, usando los mismos trajos, trajes de color naranjo, que igual que los otros uh, prisioneros que se encuentran en custodia. At this point, I'd like to uh, invite Assistant District Attorney Kimberly Smith, uh, our, again, one, one of our partners, so that she can uh, uh, explain uh, her team's important work on this case. ADA? Good afternoon, everyone. So this detention officer, Robert Robertson, has been charged with a second degree felony of engaging in organized criminal activity with an underlying felony of delivery of a pro prohibited substance into a correctional facility. He essentially has used his position as a detention officer to escape scrutiny and smuggle drugs into the Harris County jails. The other two individuals named in the indictment are both convicted felons, both have a history of drug abuse, and both could potentially be facing additional charges pending the outcome of this investigation. I do want to say that this indictment would not be possible without the cooperation of the Harris County Sheriff's Office and the team of investigators working on this case. I personally want to say thank you to the lead investigator on this case, Deputy Sean Brown, and his team who have worked tirelessly since May of this year. This is an ongoing investigation with a lot of moving parts. This is truly the unraveling of a deadly drug smuggling ring. Inmates are dying within the Harris County Jail, most due to drug overdoses. So essentially, this defendant, Robert Robertson, is facing anywhere from two and up to 20 years in TDC. That is the punishment range for this offense. He is also eligible for probation. And I can ask, or I can answer any questions that y'all have at this time from the Harris County District Attorney's Office. Uh, could you give us more details about the two other people who may be involved in this indictment? So there are two other individuals listed in the indictment. As I stated earlier, both are felons. Uh, their names are listed in the indictment, so that will be reflected there. But um, at this time, I'm not going to go into their specific criminal acts and what they have done to um, engage in this type of criminal activity because, again, this is an ongoing investigation, so there may be additional charges for them at a later date, but at this time, um, anything that is reflected in the indictment, you can refer to that. So in the indictment, those who are named, they're not, exact, they're not charged with a crime for this at this moment? They are not charged at this moment, but that is not to say that they may not be charged in the future. Where is Mr. Robertson right now? He is in custody right now, um, and he will appear in court tomorrow, and that is where probable cause will be read and a bond will be set. Has he been linked to any of the deaths in the jail? Not at this moment. We are still working to trace back any involvement that he may have uh, regarding any of the deaths in the jail, but at this time, there is no direct link to him and any death that has been in custody at this time. Is he connected to the paper, the drug -laced So he has been charged with bringing in several items, one of which is paper. Um, but uh, as far as the actual papers and the deaths associ associated with the inmates dying from the drug-laced papers, we haven't been able to make that connection at this time. What else did he bring in? You mentioned paper was one of the things. Paper, uh, also tobacco and marijuana. This how long have you been doing this? I mean, how long was the investigation? How long has this investi investigation been going on? For several months now, for several months. So what's your message to anybody else who may be involved in this any type of um, legal activity that you're doing to this Well, again, this is an ongoing investigation. We are far from complete, far from being done. So um, just stay tuned and additional charges are likely to come. Yes, sir. Just to add to, to, to her point and, and to your question is, is we're going to be relentless on this. I think one of the things I want to make sure we're pointing out is just the great working relationship that we have. We both have a common mission to make sure that we're rooting out uh, any of this uh, illicit activity. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, someone that's uh, an attorney or even our own. Uh, we're going to hold them accountable and try to hold them, uh, you know, pursue to the fullest extent of the law. And, and uh, we've, we've had a great working relationship. And again, I want to 
thank uh, the ADA here as well as uh, District Attorney Kim Ogg. And we're going to be doing more things to see how we could stop this uh, because uh, we need to say that it's just not going to be tolerated and we're going to be relentless. There's still additional moving parts to this investigation, but we also have other ongoing investigations going on. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if there's more uh, more news coming out very soon because we're, we're not going to let uh, keep keep, uh, keep take our eyes off the prize. We're going to stay focused on this because, again, it's happening far too soon, not only here but nationally as well, and it's unacceptable. And that's why laws exist, such, such as the one that was filed today, to make sure that this type of activity doesn't happen not only here but in any correctional facility. Sheriff, you've got a lot on your plate with this facility. That's no, that's no secret, but do you think that this particular investigation will help to crack down on the common problem that the NSD does? Yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, um, each, each, uh, each successful uh, action that we can take, I think, sends a, a, a loud message uh, that we're paying uh, close attention and that it's not going to be tolerated and that there are consequences today. And we may not catch it today, but it may just be a matter of time. Um, and then, uh, again, I think... We, we also, on the flip side, I, I think we'd be remiss also not to say that we have thousands of wonderful public servants that come and serve every day and are professional, complete their duties. We, we process close to 100,000 defendants every year through the system. It's one of the, large, the second largest in the country. And they do their job and they do it well and, and they need to make sure we have uh, their back and that we support them. But those that don't, that, that steer off course, then we're going to hold them accountable. And look, Commissioner's Court has invested millions of dollars to make sure that we could give significant pay raises and, and other incentives to make sure that we're uh, really growing a, a professional and positive track for detention officers within our system. But they also need to play by the rules. Sure. How long was the detention officer with you, and when, mm -hmm. how long has he been suspected of doing this? Uh, he's been uh, with us now serving for approximately six years. Uh, I believe the investigation really started to take uh, gain strength around October, if, if, if I'm correct. This but year. yeah, this year, we don't know unless we develop more information. That's why it's ongoing. If, if we could develop more information, it's been happening longer, and we could tie other, other examples or cases or witnesses. Then, then we we want that information. That'll be part of the investigation. Can you tell us anything about what sort of started the investigation? What tipped you guys off to that we were yeah, uh, our, our team just developed some leads. I don't know specifically what, what led them to this particular detention officer, but again, that's why we work in concert uh, with, with our partners at the DA's office to, to make sure we're uh, taking the proper legal strategies and, and making sure that on the investigative, that we're on the proper investigative path to, to obtain sufficient information to develop our probable cause. Sure, how lucrative was it for him? I mean, how much were they made can you speak to? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's quite a lucrative uh, organization, um, but sheets are going anywhere from $1,500 a piece, packs of cigarettes are $300 a pack. Um, the I call it a menu. Um, it's a menu of drugs, of contraband, of just tobacco products, things that you could get off the street. Um, so, But the price just continues to go up as it gets harder to get these drugs or any form of contraband smuggled into the jail. For y'all personally, how does it feel to see these public servants involved in these type of crimes? Well, it's gut-wrenching. These are people that we put a lot of trust in. These are people who are supposed to protect us, uh, make sure that the inmates are safe. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's very hard to see that this is actually happening in our world today, but we're going to try and get rid of the bad ones so that the good ones can shine. Yeah, and, and just to add to that, um, I, I think that th that in addition to that, I think that we could still have trust in our institutions uh, that we will hold people accountable, including our own, uh, regardless of, 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 of the circumstances, because it's the right thing to do. And so I'm glad that if there's somebody out there uh, doing uh, illegal activities that wears any uniform, uh, whether it be us or any other agency, then then we're going to hold them accountable. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's begin. Sí, ¿Cómo empezó este este oficial dentro de la cárcel? Sí, él ha estado trabajando con nosotros por ya más de seis años. Recibimos una una de las unidades investigativas que tenemos. Recibimos información de que 
esta persona tal vez estaba vendiendo narcóticos, especialmente como marihuana, también cigarrillos y otras cosas. Estas cosas, productos en el mercado dentro de una cárcel son muy costosas. Entonces, hay, es muy lucrativo ese tipo de negocio ilegal, esa contra la ley. Entonces, uh, por eso este, comenzó la investigación. Obviamente, tenemos que tomar diferentes pasos para poder probar ese caso, para llegar a este momento donde se le pudieron poner cargos a esta persona de, de 24 años de edad, el señor Robertson. ¿Qué es lo que se espera en adelante con los trabajadores, con los demás empleados? Sí, pues mira, gracias a Dios que la gran mayoría de nuestros empleados, tenemos más de 2,000 empleados que trabajan dentro de nuestro sistema de, sistema de, de cárcel, este, hacen un buen trabajo, reportan a su trabajo, hacen un trabajo, un labor muy, muy difícil, pero lo hacen profesional y les agradecemos a ellos, pero, pero sea quien sea, o un abogado o uno de nuestros propios miembros de nuestro equipo, si has, están haciendo ilegal o son acusados de algo grave de esa manera, pues van a ser, uh, no vamos a parar en, 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 en que tengan consecuencias también ellos. ¿Fue el abogado, fue el oficial, va a haber algún otro arresto? Pensamos que van a haber más arrestos, no, quiere, no tiene que ver que esos casos están conectados, pero estamos investigando una variedad de casos ya que ya estamos más enfocados en esto y, y esperamos que van a haber más personas que van a recibir cargos. Hasta en este mismo caso es probable que hay otras personas que pueden ser encontrados, uh, estar involucrados en este tipo de, 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 de negocio ilegal dentro de la cárcel. ¿Algo más que quiera agregar? Uh, esperamos que la gente tenga fe en lo que estamos haciendo, que apoye esto y si tienen personas que están dentro de cárcel, por favor, que no apoyen esfuerzos para traer uh, contrabando a nuestra cárcel. Esa contra la ley y también familiares se pueden encontrar culpables si encuentran que están cooperando en este tipo de actividad ilegal. Por último, ¿tenemos la foto del abogado o no la del abogado? Teníamos la del abogado anteriormente, no lo tenemos aquí, pero se la podemos entregar. Gracias. We're still, you want to speak? Thank you, yeah. thank you, Sheriff. Uh, so at this time, we can't really comment on whether or not there is a connection between any of these attorneys bringing contraband into the jail and these detention officers bringing contraband in as well. Um, so just due to the nature of the fact that it's still an ongoing investigation, we just can't comment on that at this time. Thank you all. Appreciate it.